This is uh, ORTM, Mali Radio and Television Corporation. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for Mali News. First, the main headlines. Mali, Burkina Faso, the Large Mixed Commission holds its 10th uh, session on the occasion of a meeting held in Bamako. The two countries sign cooperation agreement. Malians and Burkina Bay underlined the need for a synergy of action to face the challenges of the moment. Mali finally has a new mining code. The bill concerning it has just been passed by the National Transitional Council. CNT members also gave uh, approval for the local content bill. Their application will generate more than 500 billion CFA francs per year. August 9th, a historic date in Mali. It is little known, but it was on this date in 1962 that the national anthem was adopted. The Watch Committee in charge of the preservation of the symbols of the state was gathered around the subject. The member of this body edify us more in this edition. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for Mali News. Burkina Faso has a new diplomatic representative in Mali. Dambele Julien Sanou presented her credential to the president of the transition, Colonel Asimi Guetta, who subsequently received her in audience. A sociologist by training and a former member of the Transitional Legislative Assembly of Burkina Faso, she will work to strengthen the ties of cooperation between Mali and Burkina Faso, already oriented towards a common strategy to fight against terrorism. Sira Batili for the report with the voice of Angel Damele. Burkina Faso renewed contacts with Mali by sending Mrs. Dambele Julian Sanu as ambassador of Burkina Faso in Mali, a parliamentarian who does a first step in diplomacy on behalf of her country. Deputy since 2020 in the Transitional Legislative House of Burkina Faso and moreover second vice president of this assembly too. She was the representative of the living forces of Obasan region authorized the teacher of philosophy in high schools and university. Julian Sanu is graduated in sociology of development with a master's two degree. 52 years old, she took her first steps in diplomacy in Mali. Being in Mali, Mrs. Damele will also be in charge of the Republic of Guinea and that of Niger. She has led several programs in different fields, such as justice with the defense of human rights. The new ambassador of Burkina Faso in Mali has done her expertise to several development projects in the field of health. The chairwoman of the Association for Women and Girls is the mother of three children. She speaks Jula, Bomu, French and English. After giving a letter to transition presidents, both discussed Mali and Burkina Faso's bilateral cooperation. The two countries which are facing terrorism intend to go in the same direction in terms of policy and strategy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Burkina Faso was received by the President of the Transition, Colonel Asmi Guetta, this week. At the center of the exchange, the subject of a meeting of a large joint commission, Mali-Burkina Faso, which Bamako hosted for three days. For more details, let's listen to Olivia Ramba, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Burkina Faso, at the microphone of Fuseni Tungra and Angel Damele for the translation. I came with my delegation in order to deliver His Excellency Burkina Faso's transition president Ibrahim Traoré's greetings to his brother Malian transition president Colonel Asimi Guetta. On the occasion, we told him what we were able to achieve in three days. The meeting which governed Burkina Faso and Mali Joint Commission is at its tenth time, and we have noticed that it was not held since 13 years. An opportunity for us to review all aspects of cooperation between our two countries. 
we have mentioned the ones related to the defense and security, the free movement of goods and people, and also diplomacy. We have also underlined a very important aspect of that of the integration of our people that must be analyzed to a very extreme level. Transition President Colonel Asimigueta took opportunity to give us advice to stand up in order to be currently a best leader, which remains a very important step for our two countries. Solidarity and fraternity are their peak. Prime Minister Shokal Kokala Maiga granted an audience this week to two diplomats. Olivia Rwamba, Minister of, Af of Foreign Affairs of Burkina Faso, came to take stock of the 10th meeting of a large Mali-Burkina Faso Joint Commission. Then the UN diplomat came to discuss the withdrawal of the MINUSMA. For more details, le let's listen to the two diplomats with Alfsen Tourgué and Angel Dambele for English time. This day full of visits for the head of government, among them the head of Burkina Bay diplomacy, Olivia, accompanied by her Malian counterparts, does a commentary on the reports of the 10th meeting of Mali-Burkina Faso Joint Commission. According to Olivia, it is since 2010 that the meeting has not been held. The point that we were able to make to the head of the Malian government relates to the various fields which are of interest for the two nations and also the issues that we have in common. In his turn, Master Prime Minister gave us advice and instructions to strengthen bilateral cooperation between our two countries. In addition, the UN diplomats also met the head of government. Their discussions focused on the withdrawal of MINUSMA, the strengthening of cooperation between Mali and Burkina Faso. Regarding Mali and the United Nations constitutes the plan of resistance of the head of government's duties. The week of the 10th session of the Large Joint Commission Mali-Burkina Faso was held in Bamako this week. The two countries have signed cooperation agreement in several areas. Already at the opening of the meeting, the two foreign ministers insisted on the need for the two countries to unite their efforts to face the challenges of the moment. Report Mamari Kone and Drisaka Dambele for English time. Scan the same horizon and look in the same direction to take control of the common destiny. This is the girl of the second session of the Grand Max Commission, Mali, Burkina Faso. After 13 years of interruption, presidents of the two countries, Colonel Asimi Guita and Captain Ibrahim Traore, considered that it's urgent for the two countries to revisit their cooperation. That is done in order to identify new partnership acts which could strengthen existing cooperation. It will be an opportunity to review the implementation of 22 cooperation agreements signed since 1983 and to agree on others. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation welcomed Burkina Faso's commitments to resolving crises in Mali, a friendly country which sent its sons to secure our country. The results of experts of both countries will be submitted to the two heads of diplomacy. Before the work, the two ministers had a face-to-face -face meeting. A minute of silence was observed in memory of all military and civil victims of terrorism in the world in general, in Africa, and particularly in Mali and Burkina Faso. Mali and Burkina Faso signed 24 cooperation agreements at the 10th session of the Large Joint Cooperation Commission between the two countries, also with strong recommendations in a roadmap that specifies their rapid implementation. Note that all areas of cooperation are important, but defense and security are the top priorities. The story of Tamsir Jabate and Gasu Jara. Mali and Burkina Faso have signed 24 agreements uh, to reaffirm the 
cooperation and be together to overcome many difficulties. This new signing will allow Mali and Burkina Faso to build a new way of life. This new way of life will be better for the people of the two countries. This new way of life means the vision of the people. This vision of the people will be realized by the two countries, Mali and Burkina Faso. For uh, Excellency, the ambassador of uh, Burkina Faso, Mali and Burkina Faso get together to build a peace in order to create a sustainable development. Mali and Burkina Faso are looking for peace. Nowadays, peace is very necessary for the two countries. Peace building can bring stability. In this sense, we need to make security and stability in our two countries. We want to strengthen our cooperation to satisfy the aspiration of our people According to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Sir Abdullah Job, what we are doing, we want to give free movement to our people. We want to create wealth to our people. We are working to bring peace and security in our two countries. It is very important for us to create a new infrastructure to make life better for our, peop our two people. Therefore, we are going to strengthen the cooperation for our two countries in order to realize the aspiration of our two people. The reinforcement of the cooperation between Mali and Burkina Faso will be an opportunity to take into account all priorities for our two countries. The cooperation is based on many sectors. Any sector has not been forgotten. In this cooperation between Mali and Burkina Faso, all priorities have been taken into account. Mali has a new mining called the member of CNT. Unanis Musli gave their approval for the bill on the mining called in the Republic of Mali and that relating to local content. These two bills, once implemented, will generate an annual contribution to the state budget of more than 500 billion CF francs. The state share in mining companies will increase from 10 to 35. Reports by Modibo Mariko and Gasujara. A historical vote has been adopted by the High Council of the transition. This vote has been adopted to make mining codes better. The Minister of the Mining Sector and the Minister of Economic and Finances took part in this vote. They have made some reflection for two hours. They took into account 110 amendments and 200 bills. The members of the High Council of the Transition voted about the adoption of a new mining code. This new mining code will be replaced by the last mining code. This new mining code will bring some innovation for our economic. About this new mining code, there are many innovations. Firstly, the state has the responsibility to participate in the production of mining. Secondly, Mali owns a capital for all mining companies. Thirdly, we have signed agreements with our partners. The state owns 10 or 50 percent in the mining production. We have two agreements. The first agreement means you have the right to exoneration. The second agreement means you don't have a right to exploitation. That is a great innovation. The objective is based on the contribution of the mining sector in our economy. The process of the adoption of mining sector has been participated by everybody. It was important for us to get a law which makes sure the development of our country. Uh, of our country. Important preoccupations have been taken into account. This mining code has been shared by Malian government. You know that the uh, mining sector contributes about 10% to our economy. 
this mining code will allow us to create a farm. This farm will not only make sure local development, but also it will allow us to build some infrastructure to our people. The Independent Electoral Management Authority, EDGE, strengthened the mobile capacity of its coordinations. Ten regional coordination plus that of Bamako have been provided with 14 vehicles. It is financed by the national budget, with point with Abdul Karim Kaba and Drisaka Damele. Fourteen pickup vehicles are given to 10 regional coordinations and Bamako district of the Independent Election Management Authority, Asia. It is financed from the national budget. This means of transportation strengthen car parts of the Independent Election Management Authority. The transition authorities provide the Independent Election Management Authority with means to carry out its mission. The president of the Independent Election Management Authority, Masa Mustafa Sisi, said it's a first step and the operation will concern all coordinations of the Independent Election Management Authority, Asia. August 9th is an important date in the history of our country, but little known by Malians. Indeed, it is this date in 1962 that the national anthem was adopted in accordance with its mission to preserve and promote state symbol the monitoring committee set up by the transitional authorities remind us of this historic date the member of this committee were gathered this week around the subject Husseini Tungara and Gasu Jara for more details the commission of the judicial office held a meeting to talk about the symbol of the state. The judicial office made some reflection, some reflection about the symbol of the state. National flag and national anthem are the symbol of the state. National flag will be celebrated in this year. In this case, the judicial office learns the importance of the national flag to the people. Our national anthem was written in 1962. Our national anthem, national flag and motto have been done in 1962. Therefore, it is important for us to celebrate the symbol of the state for the young generation. The symbol of the state should be made the importance. The more we celebrate the symbol of the state, the more we honor our country. Our dignity, our honor, and our sovereignty depend on the symbol of the state. During the celebration, we are going to visit the coats of arms. In our country, everybody should learn to say national anthem respect national flag and to know the meaning of our motto we are very proud of the symbol of the state which characterizes the life of a nation and that's all for today's news but stay with us for the guests of the week today my guest is a teacher of english I let him introduce himself to the viewer of uh, Autumn One. You have your floor, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jara, for yeah. having invited me on the National TV One in Mali. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, I'm an English teacher mm -hmm. at Lycée Jacques Prévert in France. Yeah. And uh, right now I'm in Mali for holidays. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to be back to France um, by the end of this month. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jara, for welcome. coming. So how did you manage to sell your English and become a teacher in a French school? Yeah, that's a big question and a very good too. Mm -hmm. uh, as we said, um, even at school, mm -hmm. there are some teachers, mm -hmm. uh, some colleagues. Uh, we are working in the same school. 
and sometimes they wonder how I did happen to be an English teacher yeah. and to be able to, to have a very good accent. Mm -hmm. Uh, many people think that if you would like to become an English teacher, you need to go to an English-speaking country yeah. like the United Kingdom or the US. Mm -hmm. And I proudly say to these people that I did never go to the United States, yeah. uh, nor to England. To England. Yeah. I started st studying here yeah. and I went to France for studies. Mm. And after that, I, I decided to become a teacher. I'm right now working on my PhD subject, yeah. and it's something that has to do with my master's degree. Yeah. And I'm working on this, mm. and at the same time, I'm a teacher yeah. uh, as an English teacher mm. and working in a French school. And because I know that France is a country uh, which is in the need of English. Yes. And compared to other countries like Germany, uh, France is a country where students need to learn English okay. and the French government mm. they are dealing with everything mm. so to help students uh, to have very good level at English. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. So what is the role of English in the globalization of these words? Okay, <laughs> that's a good question too. Uh, I think as you said, mm. uh, I think 10 years ago, yeah. ten, ten years ago mm. English is not used on the Malian national TV. That is to say, mm. you as journalists, you have made a big progress. Yeah. And the country, mm. everyone is aware about the importance of English mm. in the world. Mm. And each country which is caring about its development yeah. has to do with policies so that people can learn English. Yeah. And I think English is uh, one of the most spoken language in mm. the world. Yeah. I can also say that it's the most important one in the world. Yeah. And any country which is caring about it, its development needs to deal with English and put things uh, for citizens to learn English and to be able to, to, to speak it as if they were natives. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how can English be a source of uh, inspiration for the development of the national languages in Mali? Yeah, uh, that's a big question too. Yeah. Uh, I think in Mali, mm. if I'm right, yeah. there are 13 languages here, spoken and written, yes. 13. Mm -hmm. And English can be at the same place as these languages. Mm. That is to say, Malian people, they need to believe in the progress yes. that they can get through their languages. Mm. Mm. And the first step that can help us to be able to serve ourselves with our language is to believe mm. to a point which is that our s languages which are locally used here mm -hmm. they can be used at the same place as English mm -hmm. and French. Okay. If you take an example on some state in the United States mm. Uh, some states like Puerto Rico yeah. and it's a, a state where we have a lot of Spanish people. Mm. Spanish and English are used yes. as some languages which are important mm. and in addition to this they are using the local languages yes. and mm. they are using these local languages plus Spanish and English mm. at the same level yes. and we too we can do the same thing with our national languages here yeah. we can use English and French and putting in value our national languages so that people can discover about our languages throughout the world. Okay, yeah, that's good. This is my so point what advice do you have for a young Malian to learn English? As you say, uh, yeah. the comparison between the language, uh, yeah. national language and English. Yes, okay. um, I think the thing that we can do, we need to, to help our young people mm. to have in mind that mm. the fact of being able to speak in English mm. is not about something that has to do with English teachers. Yes. Because even in France, mm -hmm. I used to say to my students, mm. it's not because we want you to learn English so that we would like you to become teachers. Yes. This is not the matter. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to speak English because it's something that is used mm -hmm. everywhere you go in the world. Yeah. Even if you don't like to become an English teacher, mm. even if it's not your dream job, mm. I used to say that to my students, they need to be able to speak it because they can change jobs from one day to another day. Yes. You can be today a nurse, mm. but tomorrow you can be called to work in an embassy mm. of your country in another country. Yes. And English 
is the most important language in the world. And if you know how to use it with your different ways of communication, mm -hmm. I think it can be something that can help you. So okay. I call all young people here and at abroad so to learn English and to make it as something which they can do it mm -hmm. wherever they go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jaguaga. Yeah, so we are at the end of this uh, exchange. Okay. But uh, before leaving, so what's your last word and what do you say about Malian living in France and especially the relation between, uh, between you there? Yeah, that's okay. a very good question. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I think we have very good relationship yeah. because as you said, uh, we Malian people, mm -hmm. there is a great number of Malian population in France. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. So I wish you good return to Paris to Thank continue you. your, uh, your teaching, yeah. your job. <laughs> Thank you. And once you be back, yeah. this uh, program is English program. It's open to you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Can you can be Thank back you. to yeah. exchange with Thank us. Thank you. It's Thank very, you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for watching us. We will be together next Saturday and Sunday, same time, same channel, or at M1. May God bless Mali. Goodbye.